Hi, my name is Clint Cap, and the subject of the video is Sony's beautiful F60M flash and radio trigger compatibility. Um, I went to a store here in San Jose and tried to buy radio triggers compatible with the F60M flash and we were greeted with an interesting problem which is that the the pin location on the F60M flash is not in the typical spot that most conventional flashes uh, have. And so the problem was that the pin, the firing pin on the F60M would not align with the firing pin on several of the radio triggers that we tried out. And so the question was, well, how do I modify uh, a relatively inexpensive radio trigger to work with the F60M? And the solution was that we needed to take the radio trigger apart and make some accommodation for the foot of the F60M. On the X F60M, there is a little bit of an extension to the foot for the hot shoe, and this has the contacts for the intelligent communication port on the hot shoe on an A99 body. And so what happens is when you plug the F60M into the A99, these little contacts here in the front of the foot connect to the camera and then the ADI and TTL information is transferred back and forth through the body and the flash. The problem is because of these little contacts here for the A99 hot shoe, it doesn't allow the radio trigger to slide forward or it doesn't allow the FM the F60M to slide forward far enough to get aligned with the firing pin on the radio trigger. So what happens is the firing pin on the foot on the F60M is about three millimeters aft or behind the firing pin on the radio trigger. So we looked around online, there's no adapters uh, to correct for this, you know, there's nothing available. I'm not familiar with any of the higher end uh, radio triggers, um, and frankly, I didn't want to spend that much money. What I decided on doing was buying um, two sets of these. These are the uh, Pocket Wonder Elite radio triggers, um, a transmitter and a receiver set, costs about 50 bucks. For the set, I bought two full sets plus one extra receiver so that I could wirelessly control three flashes uh, using, using the Pocket Wonder Elites. The only problem was I needed to get a little creative and modify the receivers to fit on the F60M flash head feet uh, to get the firing pins to align correctly and uh, thus get conductivity and thus be able to use the radio trigger. Very simple. So what's required to accomplish this is to disassemble the receivers, take the metal part of the hot shoe off the top half of the case, remove the spring clip that comes with the, uh, the radio receiver, and then also to take a knife and carve down the surface in front of the hot shoe so that the intelligent portion or the somewhat unintelligent portion of the foot of the F60M can slide forward beyond the limit of a little lip right here and thus aligning the firing pin on the F60M and the firing pin on the photodiox radio trigger. So what we'll do is we'll move over to the laboratory and I'll show you what's involved in modifying this or 
any other uh, radio trigger receiver you might get where there's interference between the um, the foot of the F60M and the hot shoe of the receiver. So it's quite simple. Uh, you just need little Phillips head screwdrivers and you also need a really sharp knife and a little bit of patience. So we'll move over to the lab. Okay, so here we are with a photodiox receiver and this one's already been modified. The main point of the exercise is to disassemble the photodiox receiver, take the upper part of the case off, unscrew the hot shoe, the metal portion of the hot shoe off, and uh, unscrew it and remove it from the upper part of the case. And then what we need to do is modify this part of the case so that the front part of the shoe, or the foot rather, on the F60M can slide forward. And what that'll do is allow the foot of the F60M to slide forward so that the firing pin of the F60M comes into alignment with the firing pin of the photodiox trigger. So it's really very simple. There's only four screws that hold the case together and you need a long shank, small Phillips head to reach into the recessed holes here using a firm but gentle pressure. Go ahead and unscrew this, the case uh, I put everything on a plate so that I don't lose any of the little screws. Very simple. Two back here. Once that's done, go ahead and remove the battery door and take the batteries out, if there are any in there. And then I use a different screwdriver to get to these little guys. But anyway, there's two screws in the front of the case. Go ahead and unscrew those. Give it a little tap and the screws fall out. There's another screw behind this spring for the battery, for the negative side of the battery. So go ahead and finish taking it apart. Once that's apart, you need to take a little knife and cut through this sticker like this and then very gently get a fingernail under the top of the case. Don't be in a rush to do this, just take your time. Once the case is off, set the chassis aside. Here's the upper part of the case with the metal shoe attached. Turn it over and then there's four little screws holding the hot shoe on. So just go ahead and remove those, again using caution uh, the heads of these screws strip out very easily. So you want to just make sure that you have a, a really good brand new Phillips head tip on your screwdriver and make sure that the Phillips head bit is all the way in the screw head before unscrewing the little securing screws for the hot shoe. Once that's done, the hot shoe falls off very easily. Uh, there is a little spring clip that, that comes out very easily also. You just push it up and then push it backwards to the rear of the metal shoe and then throw that aside. That's part of the reason why the, sh the, the foot of the F60M won't go forward. So once that's done, then you get to the creative part, which is how to level this lip so that the, sh the foot of the F60M can slide forward. I used, obviously, a carton cutter like this with a nice sharp blade and then just whittled my way down so that 
this surface here on the on the case was level with the upper surface of the metal shoe so once this has been cut down the forward part of the foot can then slide ahead far enough to align the firing pin of the F60M to the photodiox radio trigger. Very simple. You just need to be very careful on how much you trim off because the case is quite thin here. You also want to make sure when you're trimming that you trim all the way to the edge of the recess for the metal shoe. So you need the entire width here to make space for the foot of the F60M as it slides forward. So there you have it. Very easy to modify this little part on the uh, Photodiox um, Pocket Wonder Elite radio trigger for flash. Um, again, it was 50 bucks for the, the set, the transmitter and the receiver. It came with its own batteries. So I hope that helps. I hope you have wireless flash happiness with your Sony Alpha 99 or your Alpha 77. And again, I'm available for questions if you have any questions or comments. Thank you very much.